Okay, this experience um, was an out-of-body experience. Uh, it was not a dream or a vision. I was here. I went to this place. Um, you could call it a near-death experience or whatever, but as far as I know, I, I wasn't near death. I just went to bed one night, and I felt a presence in the room, a very dark presence. And this happened to me a few times throughout my life, a sort of demonic battle. Um, but it came into my room and I started feeling my tongue got really thick and I felt sort of paralyzed and I felt myself sort of being drawn like a magnet, like a magnet draws metal to itself. I was being drawn out of my body and my life force was coming. It came up from my feet, like it was kind of rolling up into my head and then I came out. And the first thing I realized when I was out of my body is I was in total darkness, complete pitch black, total darkness. I could tell that the terrain was, I pulled up some pictures, uh, just stuff I, I skimmed over on the internet to kind of give you an idea of what I saw and what it looked like. Obviously they're not perfect. It's not exact, but it'll give you sort of an idea of what I was seeing when I was there. Um, it was a very rocky terrain, um, just dead, desolate, sort of um, cave-looking uh, rocks everywhere. Dead, I think there were like some dead trees and stuff, you know, brush kind of poking out here and there. Uh, so it could have been, I, I took this as an experience of hell, that I was in hell. Um, it could be an experience of a post-apocalyptic world, um, say like this world, if it's on its way to hell, like the progression of what it would be like, you know, if everything died and the sun went out and the only thing, like the Bible talks about, you know, that it becomes a wasteland and a trap for foul spirits. So it could be a post-apocalyptic world. It could be even be uh, the underworld that people talk about, uh, Sheol and all that inside the earth uh, with this rocky terrain. I, I don't know. I took it. I was a kid when this happened. This was over 30 years ago. Um, I was a teenager. I guess I had just come to the age of accountability and uh, was not paying any attention uh, to God or anything spiritual, uh, just very selfish and materialistic and all of that. So anyway, back to the experience. So when I, as soon as I was out of my body, I found myself in this place. It was complete darkness, total darkness, this rocky terrain like this. Um, yeah, sort of, that's exactly sort of what it looked like, minus the light. Um, you know, just desolation, sort of, as far as you could see. And then I focused on, I saw, it was terrifying, and I didn't know where I was, I didn't know what had happened, I was still me, I had all of my, my memories and everything, and I was trying to figure out where I was, and what had happened, and had I died, and was I in hell? I, that's what I felt like, terror, total terror, I thought, I thought that I was in hell, and, uh, so I saw this light off in the distance, just one speck of light in the darkness, and I just took off running for it. I just ran as fast as I could. I just wanted to get to light. I, I, I just wanted the darkness to go away. I wanted to see some light. So I ran towards this speck of light, and as I got closer, I started to make out, you know, that's really when I started to make out the terrain around me and see what, it, you know, what it was, what the landscape was like. So I got closer and there was this orange red glow, just uh, a, a color that I can't even explain in human words. I don't think we have a vocabulary word for it. It was a supernatural, like a red that I've never seen before. That's more red and more intense, uh, just a red orange glow. And so I kept, then I slowed down and started approaching it. And as I got closer, what I saw was it was a pyramid. It was a glowing red-orange pyramid. And the strange thing about it was that 
it was upside down. It was, it looked just like those pictures I just showed with the, the sort of red-orange glow, a real pyramid, but it was like this. It was standing on its point, and it was, it was rotating very slowly, and it was hovering off the ground. It was, oh gosh, I don't know, I'd have to say like four feet, five feet off the ground, just hovering in midair and just spinning very slowly. And all around it were these people. Uh, I call them the elders, but they were, I could tell they were powerful and they walked in a circle around the pyramid just very slowly, really creepy slowly, almost like slow motion, and never looked up, never changed their attention. They just walked really slowly, and they were chanting something. They had a chant. They were all chanting it together and walking slowly around this pyramid. These are some of the pictures of what they looked like. I did not see their faces. It, it was Their heads were tipped down a little, so I don't know if they had faces, I don't know that they were even human. They had a, you know, human form, arms and legs and a head, but uh, I don't know what they were underneath there because I could not see their faces. They were all in these robes. And it kind of reminds me of this, these things you see at these award ceremonies and stuff where they do all this demonic stuff. Looks like, you know, they're calling up demons and they're going around a flame or, a, you know, this is a pyramid, so that's a little creepy, but um, obviously what we see with the pagans and the witchcraft, that was exactly what I saw. I mean, it was like a rocky terrain like this, only all of these people, they weren't holding hands or anything. They were in these hooded robes, and they weren't black robes like the Grim Reaper or anything, they were burlap brown. They were dark brown and burlappy looking robes. And these are just some more pictures that kind of remind me of it, the way it was so dark. And I, I don't know, it seemed like there were 10 or 12 of these elders going around the upside down pyramid as it hovered and doing their chant. Um, these are Bohemian Grove, you know, but this reminds me, it's really, it's, it's really scary. It reminds me very much of these uh, hooded robed people that were in this dark rocky place doing this ceremony or doing this, uh, this chant around this upside down pyramid. Anyway, so when I saw that, then I got really scared and instead of going toward the light, I didn't know where to go. So I started to run back away from the light, uh, back towards the darkness. And this is what I saw. These black people came after me. They were, uh, they had no faces, no hair. They just looked like human forms, blank human forms like this and covered in black spandex. And that's what their faces looked like too. Like there was a nose and stuff under there, but there was no face over it. And, uh, of course it didn't look like this, like they were wearing clothes. It just looked like they were blank, black human forms with no faces, no hair, not male or female, just like that. Um, here's another one. They weren't wearing robes. These people, they, the blank faceless black forms, they weren't wearing hoods or robes or anything. They were more like that. Um, and mixed in amongst them were these black forms and they were wearing human faces as masks, like actual, not like Halloween masks. These were flesh faces that were on them that looked alive and they were just like that. They were just the circle of the face on the black blank form. And I saw people I knew, some of these black beings were wearing the faces of, uh, one of them was a family member. And uh, it just terrified me that these, these beings were wearing the human faces. Not all of them, most of them were not, in fact, but just sprinkled throughout 
uh, some of them were wearing human faces and faces that I recognized. And so this one, uh, they were grabbing at me. They were all grabbing at me and clawing at me. And uh, the terror was unimaginable. I could feel, I could feel everything they felt. The fear, the hate, it was like we were of one mind when we were there. I could feel everything. The hatred, one for another, the anger, the pain and the misery. And like everybody trying to inflict it on everybody else just to get a, a millisecond of relief to release some of that. But when you released that and then inflicted that pain on somebody else there, then you in turn felt it because everybody was connected mentally like a singularity type thing and uh so there was there was no escape there was no relief it was it was unimaginable it took me 20 years to tell this story without crying that's that's how horrific this place was and how horrific it was to be of one consciousness uh with the people in this dimension and uh, anyway, so they're clawing at me and trying to trying to keep me there and trying to destroy me and hurt me and bite me and and everything everything that I won't even speak to me. And um, so I'm running through this terrain, and I look down when I yank my arm away from one of them. I look down at my arms, and I'm covered in this same thing. I'm one of them. I look down and I'm all black, like covered in black spandex, and I realize that I'm just one of them. That, you know, I I was I was a dark in darkness. And I just fell to my knees. I just hopeless. I wanted to die, but I couldn't die. There was no dying there. There was no time. The life was eternal and you just I mean, it was unbearable. It was impossible to bear this amount of pain and sorrow and grief and hatred. But you had to. You had to because you couldn't die. And so I fell down on my knees and just just gave up. Like, it just fell down and couldn't. It was so overwhelming that I could not move. And that's when I realized that the ground that I was on wasn't ground that I had been running on and tr struggling to run through wasn't ground at all. It was just piles and piles of people like me. I was just another black form on this ocean of lost souls. And we were, it was, they were just laying there, some ju just like me, just barely able to moan. The pain was so intense that you couldn't hardly even scream anymore or cry anymore. You just barely, it was like an ocean of snakes, like barely moving, just these black bodies. And now I was laying on top. I was one of them. And all I could think was when I was a little, little kid, I had gone to, my parents had sent me to uh, vacation Bible school. My mom was a believer, although she wasn't, we weren't practicing. We didn't go to church a lot or anything like that. My dad wasn't saved yet. Uh, neither of my brothers were saved or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I didn't know anything really about church or any of that. But I had gone to vacation Bible school with neighbors a few times. My mom had sent me to, to local vacation Bible schools and things like that. And I remembered making this fan in a craft class. And it was shaped like a heart. And in the center, it said, Jesus. And that popped in my mind. And then my second thought was my dad used to come into my room and wake me up as a teenager and it would drive me crazy singing this cheesy little jingle about Jesus will help you on your way, get up and start your day or something like that with his coffee cup. And it would drive me crazy. Uh, but that popped into my mind. And so it hit me like an epiphany. 
salvation. I need, I need saved. I need a savior. Someone's got to save me. I can't save myself from this. So I just screamed out, Jesus, save me. And, uh, bam, it was that fast. Uh, as soon, I mean, I think even before I, I said the words, it was like as soon as the thought entered, the speed of thought entered my mind, uh, this door, oh, it looked like a door, it looked like that, like a, a door opened in the blackness, right in the midst of the blackness above me, and this light, bright, perfect, beautiful white shone through, and... I started to go toward the light and one of those beings grabbed my arm and I looked away and the light started to leave. When I looked away from the light, the door started to close and it terrified me. I thought I would, had missed my chance by looking back at the darkness, but there was a crack in the door and the light and I looked at it and I went and I went into the light and it was the most amazing feeling it was it was beyond words especially excuse me I'm sorry <clears throat> I thought I could tell this story without crying but I guess I can anyway it was so beautiful it was and coming from that place it was to know to just to know that there was salvation that there was an escape where this from this place uh, was more than the most enjoyable ecstasy. I mean, you can't imagine. There's no ecstasy pill you can take. There's no orgasm you can have. There's no high from any drug. There's nothing that you can do on this earth that will compare to the pleasure and the joy and the peace that was in that light. And the power that coming from such a powerless feeling that in that light, I felt like a God. I felt like every cell in my body, every nucleus in every cell was having an atomic explosion. Like I felt so alive. I felt like I was made of universes. I had so much power and joy and knowledge and all of that in the light. And I still was myself. I, I still had all the memories that I have as a person in the light as I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm leaving my family. Like, the, you know, that's, that's sad that my, you know, I'm leaving my parents. I won't be with them anymore and my siblings and stuff. I'm leaving the earth. And, uh, but I wasn't sad. There were no negative emotions. I had the understanding of it and the understanding that it's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's going according to plan. And, uh, then when I was in the light, I just have glimpses. It gets foggy. My recollection of what, what we talked about. I just remember that after that thought that, oh, I'm leaving my family and all of that, that, uh, something we came to a decision like it was both it wasn't like god told me you do this and it wasn't like i made the decision by myself it was like we were of one mind and we decided that i needed to come back and finish my job and and then i was back in my i was back in my body i was back in my body in my bed and i was awake but my body was still asleep i was still conscious uh as a consciousness, as a soul, uh, but I couldn't get my body to wake up. And, uh, plus it was strange because I had two, at that time I had two thought processes going on because when I came back into my body, my body, my brain, my flesh brain was having a dream, uh, about a cartoon of all things. I was a kid. So I was dreaming about Popeye or something. I believe it was Popeye, a Popeye cartoon. But while that was going on in my brain, I, I, me, this soul, this spirit, this consciousness was also in there thinking, how do I wake my body up? I need to tell somebody about this. And finally, I pulled myself together, literally, and I dove for the, the light and flipped the light switch on, went just pounding on my parents' door, woke them up and said, get a Bible. I've been somewhere. 
you know, I needed, I needed somebody to tell me what was going on. And, uh, my parents were gracious and they got up and they got a Bible and we sat down and talked about it. I don't know if they ever believed it was anything other than a dream. And, uh, nobody in my family, uh, really believed in out of body experience experiences or, uh, any of that, I, or maybe they did, and it just wasn't something we talked about. I mean, just like every other family, uh, we've had our fair share of paranormal experiences that we talk about quietly uh, amongst ourselves and that type of thing. Uh, but no, it wasn't something that we talked about or really admitted to or any anything like that on a daily basis. So nobody, I don't know if they just didn't know what to say about it or what. So after that day, I don't ever remember talking to them about it, but I've carried it my whole life. And this is a true experience. I had an out of body experience and I saw hell or something resembling hell, a post-apocalyptic something. And that's what I saw. And the one who saved me from it, his name was Jesus. And you should know that because nobody, 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 no matter how awful they are, you think they are, nobody wants to go there. Nobody deserves to go there. Or I guess really we, from looking down and seeing, I was one of them, I guess in reality, we all deserve to go there. Uh, but there's, there's hope. There's hope that we don't have to live with our betrayal of God and, uh, that, he forgives us and he loves us and he will do anything to save us. All we have to do is ask. He's not some uh, tyrant or some spiritual rapist who's going to force himself on you. You have free will and he will come. All you have to do is ask. It's really that simple. Don't go to hell, folks. Please believe me. This really happened. This is real. Please believe me. Um, and I thought I should share that. Hopefully it helps somebody. Again, I love you guys and God bless you all.